After spending the winter in Florida, we headed to New Jersey in early March to visit family and get our refrigerator fixed. We thought it would be cold, but the first day of spring was March 20th, so how bad could it be? We planned on being in Maryland, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania for a few months before heading up to New England for the summer. After leaving Tennessee, our first stop in the Mid-Atlantic region was a Harvest Host Night at Appalachian Brewing in Mechanicsburg, PA. We don't drink alcohol very often, but I love sour beers and Rhonda's a stout drinker. The next morning we hit our first snow and we had to drive close to 100 miles in partial whiteout conditions. We're getting ready to hit the road. Hopefully things are going to be nice and safe. So we'll see what's happened. South Jersey near Philadelphia has very few camping options, especially before summertime. We usually wind up at the Clarksboro KOA. It's pretty expensive for our taste, especially since we don't use any of the amenities. We visited family and took the RV to Camping World to verify our fr refrigerator was really dead, which starts the warranty process. Of course, they couldn't give us a date to get it fixed, only at least a few weeks for the approval and then getting the new parts. After leaving the big city, we had reservations in very rural western Maryland. No hookups, no cell service, no data, but woods and mountains. We're in way western Maryland, and we just left the trailer park at the KOA in Clarksville, New Jersey, which is definitely a trailer park. And here we are. We don't have, we're right off a paved road, but only one car's gone by since we pulled in. All right next to this little stream. No hookups. I think it was 10 bucks a night. We're in site number 135 of Big Gun Road. Campsites, kind of like dispersed camping. We're about 15 miles to the exit off of 68 that we came in on, and there was a Loves and some stuff up there. Gas is super expensive still. Diesel's 515 there. It's March 26th. We're in Western Maryland, and it's snowing, and it's supposed to go down into the low 20s tonight and tomorrow night. We've been here two nights already, and both nights were in the pretty low 30s. It's snowing. At the Outdoors RV mountain track. It's doing pretty good. We have the heat on. Um, no hookups here. We're boondocking with our solar system our 600 amp hours of batteries we've been here 48 hours pretty much no sun or shaded anyway and uh, we just ran the generator for an hour and we're back up to i don't know in the upper 70s percent so we're good we've had the heat on and i'm going inside because it's really cold well it's definitely uh Winter Wonderland. The truck and the table. I mean, that's at least like three inches, four inches of snow. Western Maryland. March 20-some. Backcountry series. Kicking butt. Um, no hookups. We had a little bit of uh, moisture buildup on some of the windows and doors. You know, just the humidity from inside, I guess, us breathing. <laughs> but definitely pretty wild. We have survived without running the heat overnight, but wake up and turn it on early in the morning. Well, Joe's up on top of the roof. Sweeping off the snow. He's being really careful because there's ice up there. But there's tons of snow on the solar panels, on the awning. It's just kind of a mess. We're hoping for bright blue skies today so it will all melt and we can get outside a little bit.
But right now I'm going back inside because it's really cold. Okay, this is getting crazy. This is the third day it's snowing. Western Maryland, end of March. And uh, we emptied a tank of propane. We had the generator running and the thing died. So the propane tank was empty. We have two. I thought the second one was full. But apparently it wasn't. Ran the generator for about a half hour on it. And that one's em seemingly empty also. So Rhonda went to fill one up. And then we have a second empty. And it's supposed to get down in the 20s tonight. One tank will be fine. We went about four days with it. But <clears throat> this is just getting crazy for a Florida boy. After that snow, we went south to Virginia for a while and came back when we got the call from Camping World to have our refrigerator fixed. So we went back to the KOA for a few days. I have to say Camping World did a good job getting our problem fixed. We also took our truck to the Ford dealer to fix our backup camera. A different story. After spending close to $70 a night at the KOA in New Jersey, we were ready for some free camping. Pennsylvania State Forests have lots of boondocking spots. You have to figure out the system, but it works pretty good once you do. Our first campsite was for six nights at 018, rest stop number one, in the Delaware State Forest, which really confused Rhonda since it is in Pennsylvania, not Delaware. We liked this spot. It was really isolated with some hiking, but just off a paved road. We've been on the keto diet since January. This is a normal lunch for us. Monday, April 18th, the day after Easter. We've been camped here for five nights. Tonight, six, this sixth night will be our last night here. If we can get out, we're supposed to get about... Nine inches! <laughs> a lot of snow. And it's going now. It's about quarter to six. It's supposed to keep going till well after midnight. So we'll see what happens. As you can see, we got a lot of snow. We didn't even have anything to clean the truck windows. We were not prepared for snow. Well, Rhonda, we're about to leave. It's still snowing a little. We're in full wheel, yes. We're in full wheel drive low, trailer haul mode. So hopefully we get going with that. Um, and we are, but this corner is really tight. Well, I had to turn the camera off getting out of the spot. We had to back up a few times to make the turn, but other than that, it was okay. Yeah. Four wheel drive, low. The truck did slide a little bit though. The trailer slid a little bit too, because yeah. it wasn't really level in there, but um, we made it with no real mishaps. I don't think we got any new scratches. No. Uh, one thing we learned, even though I thought that we could close the slide with the snow on there. Uh, no, you cannot close the slide with that much snow on it. So I had to go up on the roof and clean it all off with a broom. We gotta get a new Fun, tool. fun, fun. I think we're gonna have to have a new broom too. We beat that one up there. But the road's clear. I saw a uh, plow truck go by earlier, but I think it was already clear. Our next day was eight nights at Promised Land State Park in Greentown, Pennsylvania, which is in the Pocono Mountains in northeast Pennsylvania. It's a very pretty area. Our site had electric but not water. When we arrived at the site, there was three inches of slush, which made it very hard to level our trailer. Everything was just sliding around, but it's a nice park. We're walking around. This is the lower lake at Promised Land State Park in Greentown, Pennsylvania. It snowed a couple days ago and it was pretty cold. But today all the snow is melting because you can see it's an absolutely beautiful day. Yes, I had to do a little winter clothes shopping. That's my nice new puffy coat and I got a new hoodie also. So this is a campsite where you can bring your trailer, bring your horse, 
there's a nice stall for your horse and then right across the street is a place for you to put the horse manure. Our next stop was another Pennsylvania State Forest campsite, E14 Silver Lake. It's not really near the lake, but it's very pretty anyway. We stayed there two nights, and we were able to register for this one online. It was a little muddy getting into the site, but four-wheel drive took care of that. You really have to pay attention to see the signs for the campsites. You may have to go a few extra miles to turn around if you miss the driveway. Yes, we did. Well, it's April 27th. I'm out here cooking on the grill. And uh, that's snow or sleet or something coming down. We're out here boondocking in uh, Delaware State Forest, one of the campsites off. I don't even know what road we're on. We're near Silver Lake. So, but anyway, I really love boondocking. It's pretty nice here. Two nights. There's a paved road right out there. So cars occasionally are going by, but it's pretty quiet. Oh, snowstorm's over for a while. Our next campground was Worthington State Forest in New Jersey. It's in the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. We spent five nights there, no hookups, no dump station, and the fresh water was back three miles at the entrance. We loved camping here, but I would not go in the summer with our RV. The road to the campground is really bad. You get off Interstate 80 with a very sharp turn onto River Road and then the Old Mine Road, which are both very narrow with parts just down to one lane where you have to wait your turn to drive. There are some nice campsites right on the Delaware River, but most all were too small for us. We camped in a big field with a view of the river and the mountains. It was nice and that early in the season not very crowded or very level. This area has great hiking and biking. It's a very pretty part of New Jersey that we'd never seen before. Yes, there's waterfalls in New Jersey. Yes. Doing this video, we just came up that trail right there. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, see, 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 see the, yep, and the campground's way down there. So, for some reason, we're climbing this mountain. We're on the Douglas Trail, we think. We're looking for the Appalachian Trail, which is supposed to connect here somewhere soon. We hope. There's Mr. Hiker. It's another part of the waterfall. Um, we're probably, I don't know what our elevation is. 100 miles? We're a long way up at the top. Well, we're at the Delaware Water Gap National Recreation Area. We hiked up the Howard well, it, Douglas. Douglas Trail, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much straight up. Yep. Uh, we really don't know how far up, but it, the topographic map is it, probably six, eight hundred feet elevation. We're camped right down near the river. Gotta go it's down. Way down there. Mm -hmm. See it depending on the uh, resolution you're looking at this video. And there's waterfalls. This is probably about the fifth section of waterfall. I just don't know where all that water comes from. Yeah. Guess we have to go up higher another day. So we were way up there, even past that ledge there. Yeah. A couple, I should, a couple past, yeah. Um, hasn't been too bad coming down. I'm a little nervous, but it's working out okay. So we're on the Garnet Trail. No, Garrett Trail. We're just going up to the Appalachian Trail. We'll see how it goes this morning. It's a beautiful day hiking. You can see the rolling hills over Pennsylvania. We're on the we're on the New Jersey side, hoofing it up these rocks. Who says we're old and worn out? It was a hard hike to get to that trail marker and very disappointing to see the sign missing. Well, we're walking down the trail after we made it up to the Appalachian Trail. 
There's a lot of rocks, a lot of rocks. But we're up high, you can see the rolling hills beyond the first hill in Pennsylvania. So it's really pretty up here. This is New Jersey. We're riding along the side of the Delaware River. Very nice. Legend has it that the old mine road was literally the road connecting old Dutch copper mines in the mid-1600s, starting in New York. More modern history disputes that. It was over 100 miles and goes back to the original Indian trails connecting New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. The Delaware River. You can see the trees are starting to come out. It's starting to be a little green. Pretty wide river right here. Pretty calm. We could put our boat in here, except we don't have life preservers yet, so we're going to have to wait until we get those. I actually have them on the list now, so maybe we'll buy them the next time we're in Walmart. Millbrook Village is a few miles down the old mine road from the campground. The town dates back to the 1830s when a grist mill was started. This turned into a small, self-sufficient agricultural community that lasted until about the 1880s, when the railroad bypassed it and newer technology made the mill obsolete. The town is preserved by the National Park Service and was fun to visit. Joe's up there cooking. I'm out walking around, taking pictures, day before we leave. You can really see how fast the river is moving um, based on the kayakers and canoers going through. Looks pretty nice. I definitely want a motor in order to go in the other direction. Congressional hearing today. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas testified that they've established a new like disinformation. Next, we went back to Pennsylvania and the Pocono Mountains and stayed at Toby Hanna State Park for five nights. We had electric with a dump station and fresh water available. It was just over $30 a night. So we're filling up our tank with fresh water. You can see I had to use three hoses to get to the tank, get to the fresh water. It worked out pretty good um, because Joe's doing the dumping at the same time. He's over here cleaning out all of our tanks, um, cleaning out stuff and making it nice. Yeah, all good. The campground was pretty nice. I'm sure it gets crowded in the summer, but it still looks like winter here. We were glad they had a washer and dryer on site so we could clean up. And this was pretty much peak diesel pricing. Pennsylvania is the worst. Next, we headed south again and spent a night at the Pennsylvania State Forest Big Flats parking lot site in Michaud State Forest, which is used for ATV and snowmobile fun. It was empty the night we were there, so we enjoyed it. Then we went back to Virginia and we camped in Shenandoah National Park for a week and then some time in West Virginia. Came back after 11 nights and camped at Oak View Farm, a harvest host in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. It was nice. The owner was great and we enjoyed being near the pond. Tompkins Campground in the Allegheny National Forest was our last stop in Pennsylvania. It was $20 a night with full hookups. No internet, no cell service for six nights. I really like the signs inside this park. This is the swimming beach, Tompkins Campground near Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania. Tompkins is an Army Corps of Engineers campground. They even have individual boat docks you can reserve. There's a dam which creates the lake that we were camped on. We had a pretty nice campsite with lots of room to put our stuff out. It seems that whenever we don't have internet, Rhonda feels that need to go shopping. Corning, New York was about 20 miles from the campground. It's a nice little town famous for the glass company. We enjoyed our visits there and found this trolling motor and a battery for our inflatable boat. So um, we're on our first excursion on our Saturn boat and we put the electric motor on, Joe did, and so far we haven't sunk, so that's good. 
Um, it's very exciting. It's going at a nice leisurely pace. I'll tell you the motor later. I can't really see it right now. Next, we're headed for a few weeks in New York and then spending most of the summer in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. Hoping for the cool weather. Thanks for watching and be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new to our channel. Feel free to leave us a comment and tell us what you think. We'll be happy to respond.